Hello, I'm here in Winchester today, at the very heart of London and South Western Railway country. But walking up to the station site of a now long gone rival, this was Winchester Chesil Station, the station that belonged to the DN and SR, Didcot, Newbury and Southampton Railway. The line reached its most southerly point from Didcot here at Winchester in 1885, before the company ran out of money and had to be bailed out by the LSWR with a connection to its own line at Shawford Junction. Here I'm overlooking the LSWR line, just south of Winchester, looking towards the site where Shawford Junction would have been. This would enable trains to continue onward to Terminus Station at Southampton. The former station site is now occupied by this multi-storey car park on my right as I walk up to where the end of the platforms would have been. The line from the north emerges from this tunnel through St Giles's Hill, immediately onto the platforms, which sit directly at the base of the hill. The DNSR didn't have any of its own engines, so the line was operated by the Great Western Railway. In 1957 and 58, one of their flagship engines, City of Truro, was scheduled to work the 12.42 from Didcot and return 4.57 working from Southampton. Here it is seen here at Didcot. Well, the platforms are long gone, just parked cars now, but the tunnel entrance remains used as a storage facility now by the local council. Under some of that ivy you can still just make out the faded remnants of the white painted brick to aid engine crew with signal visibility. It's amazing to think that if you were standing in the exact same spot I'm now standing in, in 1957, you might have been looking at a site such as this. Leaving the station site to the south, you walk directly along the former track bed, which is now this road. And we follow the line beneath this road bridge. With the station now behind us, we pass here on the left the location of the small engine shed and coaling stage which was in use here at Bar End from 1885 until 1953. Two engines were outstationed here from Didcot, although the shed was not large enough to keep both of them fully covered at the same time. The original goods shed still survives, but an area of light industry now occupies the site of the once spacious goods yard.
trackbed runs alongside the Itchen navigation, a canal system used for the transportation of goods down to Southampton. This photograph, taken from St Catherine's Hill, clearly shows the line's trajectory and the Itchen navigation as it curves along the base of the hill. You can also see the expanse of water meadows that sit between it and the River Itchen. The bridge in the bottom right hand corner of the picture that the train is passing over is the same one that I'm approaching here. It was during a similar approach to this bridge that this remarkable picture was taken from the footplate of City of Truro. Sadly, steam engines no longer rumble over this bridge as they once did. I'm now approaching the final and most impressive structure on the entire 44 mile route of the Didcot, Newbury and Southampton Railway, the Hockley Viaduct. Opened in 1891, this 2014-foot long, 33-arch viaduct was the work of the LSWR's consulting engineer, W. R. Galbraith. He oversaw nearly all that company's new lines between 1862 and 1907. His other projects included Kew Railway Bridge across the River Thames, the Meldon Truss Bridge in Devon, the Meehan Valley Railway, the Basingstoke and Alton Light Railway, as well as the Bakerloo and Waterloo and City lines of the London Underground. His viaduct here at Hockley carried the single line across the River Itchen and the beautiful water meadows. It was nearly lost in the 1980s when the army offered to blow the viaduct up as part of a training exercise. Fortunately, local pressure prevented such vandalism and the viaduct has been fully restored and open to the public. It is well worth a visit. Let's take one last trip with 3440 City of Truro across the 33 arches of this viaduct that carries us over the beautiful water meadows here at Winchester. 